Best possible preparation for the club's first venture into European competition. But Norwich has saved their best for the big occasion. Fox. Crook. Decent ball back. Ekoku. It's in. He's done it. Efan Ekoku for Norwich. Great finish. And they scored their first European goal at Norwich City. In the first minute of this first leg just as the Dutch team were wondering how they failed to score at the other end, watch this, it's Ian Crook with the ball forward, beautifully delivered, but what about that volley, Steve Koppel? A magnificent goal, for once, uh, looking at Latuero, overcomplicating the play, getting out of defence, but what a quality pass from Ian Crook, and the finish matched the pass. Here's Sutton in for some position. And making something of it too. Oh, and the Cocos header, and it may still go for Royal Fox. Pulls it back towards Goss. And Fox again. Culverhaus. He's onside. Ian Crook. Goss! It's 2-0 now. Jeremy Goss, the man of the moment again. delighted it's 2-0 in 68 minutes to Norwich City and Ian Crook played a part in the build-up the first ball laid in is by Culverhouse Crook gets away from his marker there Jeremy Goss number 11 right foot shot 2-0 oh, magnificent goal there from Norwich great ball from Culverhouse Crook gets to the line drags it back it's a good job Megson didn't make contact it went through for Goss, and I don't think that one will win goal in the month, but it's very, very important for Norwich. Polston. Ekoku. Sutton. They're panicking now back there, Vitesse. They don't have to undergo the stress and strain of a period like this in the Dutch League very often. Their game is much slower. The attacks don't come wave upon wave like they do in England. And here are Norwich piling it on, knowing that they've got them on the rack. Goss again. Ekoku, that'll do. Fox. They've got uh, Polston forward there. Polston! What a night it is now for Norwich City. Three goals in 21 minutes. And John Polston had the presence of mind to stay forward in that attack. When it first came over, his shot caught the defender's legs. But look what happens now. The keeper's on the ground. You won't score an easier goal than that in Europe. But he was in the right place, wasn't he? A night of glory against a seeded Dutchman had given Norwich a perfect European debut. The Canaries had made the step up from domestic football in one confident stride. Every reason to be proud for manager Mike Walker. As the game went on, I felt that we were getting used to it, but uh, it took us till half time really. And I just felt that the players, uh, and myself and Dixie, to be fair, both felt that the, the players need to sharpen the game up and get amongst them a bit more. And uh, we thought we might get some joy, and uh, you know, we did. Well, Norwich had a European mission to complete. The luxury of a 3 0 lead from the first leg meant a relaxed atmosphere in the Canaries' camp on the flight to Arnhem. <laughs> It's nice to be coming up over the three-goal lead as opposed to nil-nil or something. The most famous landmark in Arnhem is the bridge, the battleground for great losses for forces during the Second World War. But today Arnhem is a peaceful city, well in keeping with the pace of life back home in Norwich. It was an easy place for the players and the fans to relax. <laughs> Clearly, everyone was in confident mood before the battle on the pitch, a battle which could have ended with another big Norwich win. Well, Norwich planned this match rather like a military campaign. Mike Walker, the manager, has been over twice to look at the facilities. 
They've uh, been very careful in their preparation. And I hope that continues, and it might well, because Rule Fox has broken clear, and he's got a Koku square and unmarked, and a Koku! Well, four goals on Saturday, and a glaring miss tonight. That's football for you. And Efron Koku could have put this tie beyond redemption, but he completely missed his kick. Rule Fox, a great run, and a superb cross. Nothing wrong with that, but it went through the through one leg and off the other. Oh, it's a good ball by Chris Sutton, and look at Akoku here! What a chance for Norwich! And he's fluffed the second one! Well, would you believe it? Akoku here was clear of the defender, and he poked that straight at the goalkeeper. Two wonderful opportunities for Okoku and Norwich to have gone clear, and they've both been missed. John Polston again keeping a check on Helder. Here's Lamas. Vermeulen. Little ball in for Hill House. Vermeulen, challenge comes in behind him, here's Lamas again. Number seven, Koku. Good header out, this is Sutton. Now, could he get a Koku through the middle? Oh, look at the pace of the man! And he's going to be clear for his third great chance! Surely this time, Efana Koku, has he gone too wide? He's hit the side netting and he's missed a hat-trick now of chances. Well, he's through. He goes round the keeper, who drives him a little bit wide. If he'd gone down there, he might have got a penalty. Instead, oh dear me. Despite the misses, the Canaries had passed their first European test with flying colours. It was a moment to cherish. This was what the fans had come to witness. The sweet taste of success on foreign soil. Um, the referee and linesman were a bit, a bit of a letdown. I didn't think they did their job very well. Um, we've competed well, challenged through every, every ball, tackled everything, and yeah, we're delighted. To be fair, the fans who have travelled up uh, need to get a lot of credit from us. I mean, they've travelled up and it, they've made it such a good atmosphere for us. So, you know, hopefully, yeah, we've learnt from today's game that, you know, all we need to do is just dig in deep and all work together and perhaps, you know, we could keep getting the results, hopefully. It was very a result that put Norwich in second place in the Premiership. Meanwhile, it was time to face the music in round two of the UEFA Cup. Despite their success in Arnhem, no one outside Norwich really gave City much hope in Germany's Olympic Stadium. We've been reminded time and time that, you know, we are the underdogs, but that's how we like it, you know. People always say that we're underdogs, you know, going into Europe, you know, we were underdogs against VTES, but, you know, we've got through that quite comfortably and, you know, hopefully we can do the same again tomorrow night. There's no reason why we should be frightened of them. If they're better than us, they're better than us. That's all we, you know, we can go out and do our best. Uh, I'm quite happy that we're running through the team at the moment, and uh, I don't see why we shouldn't come here in the moment, and uh, I don't see why we shouldn't come here and uh, and get a result. I still think we'll do ourselves justice tonight. I think it'll be fine. If we can get a goal, we'll be all right. <laughs> we can get a goal. What do you think the score's going to be? I'll settle for 2-1. There's Sutton. Bowen battling away. Fed in by Newman, and Robbins well forward, and Goss was well forward too, and Norwich have taken the lead. Jeremy Goss again. Unbelievable stuff. Well, when he scores goals, they're either spectacular or important, and that one's both. Mark Robbins makes a nuisance of himself on Mateus, whose header out is met on the volley by Goss, and Alman stood and admired that. That's how good the shot was. Rob Newman plays it in, Mateus backpedalling, heads it up into the air, and Jeremy Goss, just look at that. That's a stunning goal. I mean, you know, if any other European side or Bayern Munich player had scored it, we'd, we'd give it all the plaudits. So. Hopefully we can do it justice because that is a magnificent volley and 
certainly that one at Leeds, wasn't it? He hit from the edge of the area that won our first month's uh, goal of the, the month, and that was just as good a superb goal. And, I mean, must settle the side down now. Well, it came after only 13 minutes. What a start for Norwich in one of the great stadiums of world football. Jeremy Goss produces a goal that, as you say, could hardly have been bettered. They're trying to retrieve the ball at the moment. I wouldn't have thought uh, to see uh, Bertie Vogt, the West German, the German manager, and, of course, the man in the red scarf next to him needs no introduction, does he? The one and only Franz Beckenbauer. Flick on. Darrell Such got a shot in there at the near post and uh, our man had to go down and concede the corner as Norwich forced the pace again. I wonder if he might have hit it first time. It was probably a bit too far away from him. In the end, it was a, a tight angle and the keepers pushed it away anyway for the corner. Which is going to be taken by Crook. Oh, and the header brings another save out of our man. Ian Butterworth getting forward for Norwich. This is the corner delivered by Crook, and Butterworth here finds a way between two defenders. Ziga, John Dean on his feet, waving from the bench. Hey, hey. Hey, Davis trying to pass instructions up to that's culverhouse in the picture but i think they were shouting further up at uh, chris sutton there he's a bit isolated at the moment chris sutton because uh, mark robbins coming off and daryl such substitute has come on he's, he's more a sort of wide midfielder but if, rather than change the pattern too much that they've asked him to sort of be that second striker but he is getting drawn back into that midfield which is only natural and, and so sometimes when they're looking to play out they've only got sutton and so they, they're just conceding possession a, a bit too early Free kick to Norwich. Crook takes it. Oh, it's a bit of climbing there, and a chance on the far post, and it's in! It's Mark Bowen. And Norwich are two up. <laughs> this is almost fantasy football. It is amazing, isn't it? When the cross came over, I thought there was a bit of climbing on the back here. As, as you see, it, it hangs in the air. And I, I thought it climbed on Sutton, but of course the fullback Jorginho just stood and watched, and Bowen nipped in in front of him and, and just picked his spot. It's Ian Cook's free kick. Cook's free kick. Yes, there was a case of a possible shove on Sutton, that's for sure. But look at Bowen. Gets ahead of the Brazilian and buries that in the far corner. Terrific stuff from Norwich. Two goals in half an hour in the away leg. And neither could Mateus cover the ground either there. Back with Bayern now and Bouters. Well, no wonder Mike Walker had his arms raised there. And the crowd getting restless, to say the least, now with Bayern Munich. Here's Jorginho. Scholl. Matthias and uh, Jorginho again on the right, decent cross, here comes Nerlinger, oh it's in, they pulled one back, and Nerlinger, number six, stolen at the far post, and Norwich for the first time tonight were caught napping there, Eric Rebeck sees his side, pull one back with four minutes to go to half time, and it was the Brazilian Jorginho again with a good deep cross from his side of the pitch, but Nerlinger there with the header, squeezing it into the near post. I mean, from Norwich's point of view, what, a minute or so before half-time is a desperate time to concede a goal. And, and I think you'll see Pryor, Spencer Pryor is the man marking Nerlinger. And he appealed to the referee to say that he was nudged as the ball was en route. But it was a good header, downward header. Brian Gunn had no chance. Vouchers now. Bit of movement ahead. Mateus well forward again. Vouters. Jorginho. That's aimed at Valencia. Still not really away. Scholl is in there. Valencia again! Oh, point blank range. And I would have thought the Colombian might have done better there. 
who just got half a yard, didn't he? Look, he's got a clear strike at goal and straight at Brian Gunn, didn't have to move either way, and the perfect height, chest height, not the ideal finish. Corner to Bayern Munich, Helmer in the thick of it there. They've decided to play it all the way back to Lothar Matthias, and there's the volley, it comes off a Norwich player. I think there were one or two uh, arms up for offside there when that shot was hit, but it's a corner again to Bayern. Labadier on the goal line. Kreutzer's flick. Oh, good header out, but for how long? Matthias. Jorginho. Valencia! Oh, brilliant save by Gunn, and they fired the rebound over. Wonderful save from Valencia by Brian Gunn, the Norwich goalkeeper. Well, amazing. I mean, it's one of those where the goalkeeper just spreads himself keeps his fingers crossed and the linesman's flag then went up for the second shot which went over the crossbar because somebody was lying in an offside position but that one would have counted and somehow Brian Gunn this spread is, himself this is Kreutzer who has the chance if he kept the shot down it was still on but he didn't Valencia thwarted by a great save and Norwich keep the lead Vautis lets it run on to Matthias nice change of direction by the German That was a bit of flair that I think the Bayern Munich midfielder has been lacking this evening. And when you think of him in that sweeper's role, particularly for a home game like that, that one was just going to creep in. Uh, I do feel he, he should have been pushed forward. And although he's been very successful in that role in the opening weeks of the Bundesliga uh, season, this evening they have lacked that little bit of subtlety that I'm sure he would have provided. Norwich City pull off a memorable victory in the Olympic Stadium in Munich. No wonder their fans wave the scarves. One of the finest displays by an English club away from home in recent years. The goals coming in the first half from Jeremy Goss and Mark Bowen. Bayern Munich pulled one back, but no more. And Norwich take this famous German club back to Caro Road, already in the lead. And you couldn't have asked for a better performance, well supported, and superbly planned. Bayern Munich 1, Norwich City 2. Norwich break new ground in Europe. That was a great performance, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, we've had a defender, you know, went under the collar, but magnificent. The players did everything like we did at the test. Said we could hit them on the break, and we got the two goals. Disappointed with the goal against, obviously, but uh, we defended magnificent. Gunners made a couple of great saves. I think we deserved it. Although it was hard work, we had to defend. But it gives us a good chance for the second leg. After the glory of mastering Munich, with uh, Valencia and Vitacek pushed right forward and Jorginho, the Brazilian, has gone up for this free kick, number two. That was Vitacek. Oh, and Dunn, again, just got to that before Valencia. A few hearts went in the mouth there, didn't it? It's almost like a slow motion it was. Uh, as you can see, Vitacek, the nine, just gets in front there of his marker and just bounces in front, looks as if it might go away from him. And Valencia can't get the touch. This is Crook, Fenster, headed back in again by Butterworth, comes out to Goss. I'm sure it's asking too much for him to produce another one, just like that goal, just like that goal in the Olympic Stadium. Well, he made some progress there, and on these uh, corner kicks, they've got to keep an eye on uh, the two centre-backs who come up. Helmer number five and Kreutzer four. They've both been known to score from these. It's turned in by Schupp. The header out wasn't set and Valencia got in and Bayern Munich score. Adolfo Valencia swooping when the defence seemed transfixed. And what a game we've got here now. The Germans have taken the lead in the fifth minute. Ziga took the corner number three, played it short to Schupp. Then the cross went in, the header hit a Norwich player, in fact, and Valencia scores. Brook again. Sutton's up there. Fox is trying to reach it, he has. This is Bowen. Oh, what a chance for Sutton, and he's pulled it wide. 
Well, that was a good chance. I mean, Chris Sutton does seem to have the beating of the German defenders in the air, and, and when Fox, one possession there, knocked it to Bowen, who squared it, you did feel a better first touch, and it would have been a goal. He just got it tucked underneath him and dragged it across the goal. As you can see, his first touch there is still underneath him. He hasn't got room to swing. Drags it past the post. Ziga. Jorginho. Norwich crowd really doing all they can to lift the side. And I think they won that tackle for Jerry Goss. And here's Darren Eady, just a bit too far ahead of himself. Crook, though, will find Bowen. One over here, Sutton, goes, yes! You don't need to ask who scored it. Jeremy Goss, once more the hero of Norwich. There was a man over in the box from the moment the cross was struck. And the, and the Germans arguing among themselves frantically back there. Here's the cross from Bowen, and Norwich have got really three against two in there. Edie was spared for a minute, but Goss put it away. What an important goal this could be, Trevor. Well, Chris Sutton showing his dominance in the air. I think the goalkeeper could have come. It, it hung in the air a long, long time. He stayed on his line. The defenders, I think, were wondering whether he was going to come. And that man, Jeremy Goss, tucks the ball away. But it's important Norwich mustn't get carried away because it's 1-1 and, and Munich still only need the one goal to take it into extra time. Edie gets the foot in, goalkeeper. Making some busy runs, he did not found it easy against uh, the quality of, of Matteo sweeping, but I'm sure Norwich are delighted to see him still making those interceptions. I, I would have felt at some stage Werther's and Matthias could have swapped round and let Matthias go into that midfield position. Well, he played it so deep there, Matthias, he played them onside, Fox. That really was poor defending, and it bore out a point Alan Hansen made at the start. Matthias was standing virtually on his own penalty spot, and he gave two Norwich players the freedom of the pitch. Fox gets in here with the final shot. Look where the sweeper was. Two of them were there. Fox didn't go for the right man there. This is Ziga. Ports are on the far side. Valencia needs picking up in the centre. Nobody did. Oh, goodness me, there's a chance here. And Norwich are all over the place. It was Scholl, and then Kreutzer, and now Sternkopf. Oh, and Scholl again. They desperately needed somebody to shout there, didn't they? <laughs> Nobody seemed to know what was going on, and now the Bayern players surround the referee again. It's Matthias. Oh, look at this, the referee's having to hold him off. Uh oh Park's coming out now. Yellow card for Lothar Matthias. And I'll tell you what, it'll be ready if he carries on doing that. second leg was drawn but tactically Norwich won the tie three goals to two on aggregate they did enough here especially after going behind so early it's a nightmare conceding a goal so early on I can't believe how uh how unlucky we were really on the defensive corner, but there we go, we did well, we hung in there and uh, I think we've come away worthy winners over the two legs. I caught you cold at the beginning, but I've rarely seen so much determination from the team. I know, it's obvious, look at the crowd, look at the occasion, you're going to get determination, whoever plays, it's fantastic. <laughs> Played really well in the first leg and we battled really well tonight, it wasn't a good performance but we battled, that was the main thing. Tremendous support from the, from the home fans yeah, as well. Right. I mean, if we can get this every week, I mean, we'll, uh, we'll take some beating. Um, our home form's not been that good this season, but if they can, if they can give us all that every week, we'll be, they'll, we'll be with them. We've got a fancy of chances in this tournament now. Bring on the draw on Friday. You know, if, if we can beat Bayern Munich, we might, um, you know, we never know what can happen in this tournament. We've really enjoyed it, though. Congratulations. Thank you. The Canaries' date with destiny had ended in unprecedented scenes of celebration at Carrow Road. The fans had willed their team to victory, and there was no doubt who the man of the moment was. We 
used to seeing nice girls from Norwich, but I don't think I've ever seen a Norwich team work so hard. Yeah, I mean, every player worked, worked their socks off. I mean, we got in some great tackles, some great headers. We were closing down well. And when we pushed onto them a little bit, made it hard for them, closed them down, um, you know, we made them look um, not the buying unit we expected. You know, they, were, you know, they didn't like it under pressure. And Jeremy Goss, he obviously enjoys playing against Bayern Munich. Yeah, he's, he's the man again and he's scoring the goals and uh, that's two goals now against him. And like you said, we needed that one because um, it was a terrible start to give a goal away after four minutes. But we're still in the game and like you said, we, um, we defended resolutely and in the end, you know, probably worthy winners. We heard Brian Gunn earlier saying that Jeremy Goss is becoming a little bit of a god round here. Well, that's what they call him now, Jerry God now. I mean, uh, he scored some great goals in this season for us, so I mean, he can walk on uh, the clouds now, can't he? At Carrow Road for City's UEFA Cup date with Inter Milan. Side is Dennis Bergkamp. Gunn comes to meet him and uses his feet to great purpose. It was a, a clear flick by Gunn. There was no luck in that. Used his foot and used his head. Still always the threat. Hussey break. Gets through to Bergkamp. Burkamp breaking through and Burkamp breaking through and Culverhouse covering behind Brian Gunn. Picked up by Sutton. Waited well. Couldn't keep it down. Bergkamp down the middle. And again, he doesn't get it right. He felt that he was impeded. But I suspect that's more born of frustration. The ball wouldn't sit for him. Well, there was half a challenge. Sosa as Norwich push up. They're living on their nerves. Oh, that's a penalty. The referee had absolutely no doubt about that. Rob Newman bringing down Ruben Sosa. Comprehensive. It's 1 0 to Inter Milan. And look at the reaction. Gunn committing himself and only able to watch it go by. It's not over yet, you know. I mean, we're quite capable of going away and winning by two clear goals, no problem. And uh, we won't give up. We've seen a little bit tonight and I'm, I'm, you know, encouraged a lot by what we've seen, but disappointed because of the result. But uh, I'll tell you, if they think it's over, they've got another surprise maybe coming. So Norris certainly a good boost of confidence before the UEFA Cup second leg with Inter Milan. After Holland and Germany, to Italy was another great experience. The midweek break in Milan was an opportunity to enjoy a visit to one of the world's most famous soccer venues. For the first time in Europe, Norwich had the time to overturn a first leg hit. Trailing 1-0, the odds were made worse by the absence of the three Ians. Key men Ian Crook, sweeper Ian Culverhouse and skipper Eworth. Mark Robbins was also out, but Ifani Koku made his comeback. Sutton didn't quite make it. Didn't quite make it. Off the eyebrows of uh, Megson. Well seen by Bowen. And onside it, Koku. Beautifully taken. Oh, look wide. They're looking at the linesman, but he said onside. And Koku took it beautifully on his thigh. But then off the outside of the right boot. It wouldn't come back in for him. It's time yet. Bergkamp to tackle him. And eventually Woodthorpe gets him. Orlando. Fontelin. Two waiting in the middle. Sosa and Bergkamp. 
Delano. Nice check out. Good play. Good save. It's going to happen again. Oh, and he improvised really well then, Brian Gunn. Three the foot. But the best we've seen from Inter. Brilliant stuff from Brian Gunn. Lovely play between Delano and Sosa. Bowen loses it at the back. Sosa in support. Only Woodford back. Shalimov arriving as well. And Bergkamp does it again. His seventh goal in this UEFA Cup competition. I mean, but I, you know, we're fairly disappointed because we've got a great show. We've had some great chances. And, you know, I'm just full sorry for the support. He's had been tremendous all the way through. And uh, hopefully we've done them proud as well as English football. The dream was over and the tears flowed. But the Canaries have done themselves proud on one of Europe's greatest stages. Five days after the draining experience of their UEFA Cup exit in Milan, Norwich were back in the spotlight in the Premiership.